Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to this special session with that which shed light into the Qatari sports tech scene. Each year, Qatar joins a host of countries from across the globe to celebrate the Global Entrepreneurship Week by holding Rawad, the entrepreneurship conference that has become a dynamic platform where the brightest entrepreneurs, renowned business leaders, and key industry stakeholders gather to discuss best practices, share knowledge, and highlight trending topics on the future of the SME ecosystem. Tonight's panelists will discuss key topics around the role of technology innovation within the athlete, the team, and the ecosystem as a whole. Please allow me to introduce our esteemed guests who will give us a look towards 2022 and Qatar sports tech space. Ahmed Abbasi, the Executive Director of Competition and Football Development in Qatar Stars League. Welcome, Ahmed. Afra Al Naimi, the Executive Director of Jasur Institute. We're glad to have you, Afra. And Professor Naboska Popovich, the Senior Orthopedic Surgeon at Aspatar. Welcome, Dr. Popovich. My name is Heba Al Masri, and I'm the Managing Director at Qatar Sports Tech, and I welcome you once again to the evening's discussion. We will start a discussion with Mr. Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed, can you take us through of what is the role of technology in enhancing the football experience for the teams and the fans? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salatu salam ala Sayyid al-Anbiya al-Mursaleen. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for inviting me to this, to this amazing um, event and this amazing panel. We are awaiting very, very exciting times in the future, in the near future. And especially now with the, with the COVID-19 situation, um, taking the bright side out of, out of this crisis, um, we have seen uh, an ac accelerated digital transformation all over the world across all industries. And football is no um, exception in that. So the purpose of technology is to make our lives easier. And this goes the same for, for football, uh, for sports in general, but especially now talking about football. And it has changed the, the industry uh, immensely in the past couple of years. Um, and now, for, for example, uh, probably the, the most popular and controversial example is uh, the VAR, which is um, the, video, the video assistant referee. Uh, so ba basically now, we have technology even interfering into the game. Uh, it makes us quicker, faster, stronger, and gives us a competitive advantage over the opponent so that we can uh, know our players better, uh, know our weaknesses, uh, and, and also, of course, the weaknesses of the, of the opponent so that we can, we can um, have a fraction of a second of an advantage where we can score a goal and, and, and win it. So uh, we're, we're looking, looking forward to a... To a an amazing future with, uh, you know, faster football, quicker football, and that through and with the help of, of, uh, of uh, technology and innovation. Yes, I think that we're all looking forward to the same. Uh, Dr. Pofwich, can you take us through of how the technology improves the athletes in performance, as well as reducing the risk of injury? injury? Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation. Uh, in recent uh, years, the number of stair cups specializing in the uh, area of athletic performance, analytics and uh, artificial intelligence has uh, proliferated, contributing to rapid growth across the sports technical sector. I'm going to take only one uh, example of co uh, coaching platforms. Uh, rising motion uh, sensor captures to guide and to correct, correct individual uh, workout. What um, <clears throat> this technology gives us, uh, you know, uh, when we, we have published medicine, lots of study uh, about the prevention of sports injury, because that's uh, very costly, that's uh, very big problem for the athletes and uh, because Today we are always demanding more and more, and we are looking all uh, every, everywhere to find some solution that can prevent uh, uh, injury. This new new technology gives us um, possibility to analyze their uh, movement, to correct uh, their technical uh, technical errors, 
and that is one of the uh, most uh, the biggest cause of injury and especially of overuse injury. Thank you, Dr. Popovich. Um, Afra, uh, what is the role of technology in creating uh, an overall look of um, talent pool within Qatar to deliver the World Cup 2022 and the global events as a whole? Thank you, Heba, for having me among your distinguished guests. Um, as Ahmed Abbasi, for example, mentioned, uh, currently we're witnessing the uh, immediate shift to e-platform in different industries and different offerings and uh, uh, services. When it comes to Jusur, uh, we previously used to have mixed approach to deliver our programs, both online and off uh, offline methods. And post-pandemic, we shifted all our, uh, our offer offerings to online. Of course, having uh, online uh, programs will give us more accessibility to world-class uh, speakers and leaders that uh, will enhance the quality of our programs and content. But also, statistics showed that we uh, have increased number of female participation in sports and events programs. Also, increased the number of uh, program completion. Uh, both in the event and sports uh, educational offerings uh, with Jisur, uh, an all increase of number of talents that are joining the sports and event uh, industry. So on, on that note, um, Ahmed, if you if you will look into the QSL specifically, what are the existing technology now being used and to enhance specifically the fan experience and how it's going to help improve the quality of sports moving forward? We have been one of the first believers in football innovation and football technology. So we have invested um, more than a decade ago in, in this field uh, and with, with, uh, with a great success. Um, for example, in, in analysis, which is a big part of football technology and innovation, um, we, have, we have tracked um, the statistics of, of our players uh, and we have data um, you know, backdated um, over a decade. Um, which gives us the opportunity to analyze uh, as a league uh, the development uh, of, of our players, um, our weaknesses, where we can improve, how we can improve it, together with our experts and analysts. Uh, at the same time, we give uh, the opportunity to the, to the coaches to study the players uh, in a better way on a day-to-day -day basis. So it means um, on, on, um, in the training, but also uh, during the matches. So that, um, so that they know um, how the player is, how, what his condition is at the moment, um, how, how he can improve him, what the weaknesses are. But also, as uh, Dr. Popovich said earlier, to prevent any injury, uh, we can, the, the, the coach can, uh, can detect a player who, uh, who has a high risk of, of getting injured at, uh, at, at a certain point. Um, but of course, all this technology has, has uh, developed um, uh, very rapidly in the past 10 years. So now, um, when it comes to analysis, um, it, it is, it, it's, a, it's life analysis, which means um, during the match, for example, and this is one of the technologies that we use at, um, in QSL for our local league, is life analysis. What is life analysis? Life analysis is um, a technology, an analysis technology, which gives the opportunity for the coach uh, to receive live feeds from his analysts who are uh, behind the bench um, with the statistics, uh, as I said, live, to take instant um, decisions during the match, um, which can be tactical, uh, uh, but which can be also uh, preventing um, any injuries. Um, it helps the coach to take the decision um, based on, on, on the situations and the actual changes that are uh, happening during the match, rather than um, waiting for um, the halftime or an analysis after the match to prepare the next one. So this is this is a, a huge shift um, in in the industry. Uh, another another um, big step in the industry is training analysis, which a lot of coaches are um, are very much concentrated and focusing on. Um, so which means the the training session is recorded, and there is an, a special a special analyst who is um, uh, communicating with, with, the, um, with the rest of the technical staff to, uh, to change around during the training to prepare the match even in a, in a better way. So all of this um, helps the coach to enhance uh, um, you know, the performance of the team. But it, it is only possible 
if um, you know thanks to um, Afra and and, uh, and and her team, uh, it's it's to to enhance the capability of people who have the knowledge and technology and innovation, uh, and and only only this way, um, you know, people, more more and more people get to understand the new innovation, um, get to understand the new technologies, because uh, you know, as I said in the beginning, um, technology and innovation is that, that's just a tool if you don't know how to use it. If you don't know how to get to make use of it, uh, another example, and we were also one of the pioneers uh, in, in in applying all our uh, matches um, um, with uh, the VAR, which is the the, the video assistant uh, referee, um, and you know this is this is also something uh, which has uh, revolutionized uh, the, the 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 football. Uh, it's it's uh, it's more fair. So you know, whenever there is a there is something that um, the referee needs uh, needs to take a decision on, it is more accurate. So you you know you know that um, there is nothing that goes through with uh, you cannot lose a match uh, because of a mistake of, of a referee. And we believed in this technology from the beginning, and, and it's it's very important um, for for organizations who, who want to play a big role in the future. To believe in, uh, to believe and invest in, in, in technology and innovation from uh, from an early stage, in order to be uh, one of the first. Because if if you don't do that, um, you know, technology technology and innovation will 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 develop and, and, and grow faster than than you can grow if you don't invest in it. Um, so we, we are very proud to be pioneers in that. Yes, and indeed, I think uh, Qatar as a whole are pioneers in innovation, and it's great to see that uh, QSL in specific is moving forward in that direction and in adopting this technology from around the world. Um, now, uh, to take a closer look into rather than the team uh, and the club as a whole, uh, Dr. Popovich, can you get us into the athlete itself, themselves and what are some of the latest techs that are using within the health and the rehabilitation centers? <coughs> I agree completely what was said before, and uh, we, uh, you have to know that medical part, especially, uh, they are pretty conservative and they are they accept a very difficult new technology. Understand that's typically for this uh, for the medicine, but um, uh, having the opportunity uh, to work and to live. Uh, uh, in Qatar and uh, this uh, whole organization of world uh, uh, championship in football completely change uh, our approach and uh, aspire where I'm working last uh, six seven years as well is heavily invested in uh, new performance center uh, in a new technology and that is all uh, that's only one part of that uh, complete uh, uh, Qatar nation approach uh, and uh, we was lucky to be there and uh, what happened uh, there was a locking of, of uh, COVID-19 and uh, we have to start to very quickly to utilize this new technology and their possibility and uh, Okay, you are going. Uh, you have to know that the surgery stayed the same in operating the theater, but everything else have changed. Uh, you can have now your uh, physical treatment at your uh, home, and that you have to uh, we utilize new technology. You have to have you, uh, your first uh, clinic appointment utilizing new technology from uh, your home to be connected with us and. Uh, uh, really, that is uh, uh, now we find ourselves in uh, uh, changing uh, moment of uh, maybe history of uh, 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 sports medicine, and uh, we are conscient that uh, we have to integrate it all this possibility of new technology or uh, other side you are going to stay the loser. Yes, uh, it is no doubt that the health uh, industry as well as the sports industry has been affected with uh, COVID uh, very recently. And now to put the two together, there's been challenges, but uh, 
Absolutely, Aspatar is the one place that is moving forward and adopting things very easily. Um, Afra, can you take us through a look of uh, Qatar as a whole? How can Qatar leverage the technology to achieve the vision of being a global sports hub and to continue innovation in the sporting events industry within Qatar? Um, as we are about to uh, host the first uh, MENA and Arab uh, World Cup in Qatar, uh, I think it gives us uh, the uh, uh, put us in a position to be, as uh, my colleague Ahmed said, a pioneer in hosting and creating uh, or using the technology and innovation, not only in the delivery, but also in the preparation of hosting such an event. Um, so if you see the focus that Qatar is now um, uh, uh, focusing on is the legacy, whether it's the hard legacy or the soft legacy, uh, the soft legacy uh, includes the technology that is used in the preparation of the uh, of the hosting country, and also the technology used in upscaling human capital, making sure that they are capable of managing the the innovation and the technological tools that we have uh, in the sports and event industry, and also in the actual delivery of the event. Uh, and when it comes to Jusur Institute, we use uh, different technologies to deliver our programs. Uh, whether in the customized programs that uh, that are designed for the executive and leaders to uh, to deliver the actual tournament, such as for example the table top uh, that is based on scenario uh, scenario uh, decision making uh, process, and other technology that uh, we we are using not only to create a pool of talent but also to support further develop. Uh, the industry of support uh, sport and event in Qatar and the MENA region. Yeah, I would uh, we'd love to hear more about your Jasur and all the programs that you have um, in the following question. Ahmed, if you can just take us now through the sports industry. It's gaining momentum and it's growing rapidly. How can the global sports scene contribute to Qatar's evolving sports industry? We promised the world um, the amazing and, and we are um, sure to, to deliver that. And this became our culture um, in football, but also our football. So generally, this is a general uh, um, culture in the society that uh, we, we have very, very high standards of, of delivery. And uh, um, a major driver in this is, um, um, is technology and innovation. Um, this has gained momentum. Um, as I said earlier, um, through the COVID crisis, uh, it has been um, it has accelerated. Obviously, we need um, we need more innovation. We need more uh, um, technology to adapt um, to a new future, to a new uh, future where um, everything is faster, everything is stronger, um, and everybody is just looking for um, um, how to become better and and um, and then and grow faster. And this is, um, you know, this is the only the only way to do that is through uh, knowledge and and uh, innovation and technology. Um, so so th these standards help us to to gain um, um, the momentum um, to gain um, the objectives. But but what is what is um, after 2022? Um, for us, 2022 is is a catalyst. Um, it's a, it's a big objective. We are going to deliver uh, the amazing. But um, it, it helps us to, um, to create a future beyond 2022 through innovation and technology, which is, which is even better than 2022. So um, te technology and innovation is a driver, is a constant dri driver, um, which, which, will, um, which will create um, a faster future, a stronger future in, in, in football. Um, we, believe in, um, we believe that the, the, the 5G technology will, will open up a lot of opportunities for new innovations and technologies, and um, you know it's 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 a world that um, it, that we can we cannot we cannot imagine today how it will look like in a couple of years from now. Yes. But um, uh, it's certainly uh, something exciting um, to 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 see all this um, all this the development, and, and we support any um, any project that um, you know that is eager to to create this uh, this beautiful future. Yes, as I always say, that the 2022 is only the beginning in Qatar. I'm sure there's plenty more, and this is just the kickoff. It's just kicking off with a bang.
Dr. Popovich, the sports tech industry, and more specifically, the health and medtech industries, have grown rapidly in Qatar and globally. What technologies do you see today that didn't exist five years ago? And how easy was it to implement and adopt these? First of all, I would like uh, to repeat, uh, Ahmed, that uh, uh, 22 World Championship is only going to open, largely open the door for all possibility of uh, development and the progression of this new technology. And uh, uh, I would like also to, to remind you that uh, sport global, uh, sport uh, global technic market only in the United States a few years ago was 9 billion of US dollar with expectation to triple in few years. And that is a, a fantastic opportunity. Um, <clears throat> Qatar is the place to be for the young people with all these uh, innovative ideas. Infrastructure, we have it lots of done. I'm focusing more uh, in my enterprise, Aspire and Aspetar, where I am working. Uh, we have a, a performance center and uh, so on with uh, uh, things that for me uh, as a surgeon is sometimes difficult to understand. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to say that the young people go forward uh, everything has changed, and uh, especially in the future, uh, sometimes in the medicine, we need 10 to 15 years to progress. Now that's going to be progress uh, each six months, and that's going to go forward so quickly. And uh, uh, young people who are involved in this innovation uh, you have to push it, and uh, what uh, is uh, going to be like in five or ten, uh, ten years, it's very, very difficult to say, you understand? You have to have uh, lots of uh, imagination to see it, you understand? But uh, nothing is going to be as it was uh, before. Uh, concerning uh, sport, uh, sport uh, medicine, and all this introduction of new technology. And uh, uh, and reali the reality for the good of the athletes and the patient, of course. Yes. Uh, but uh, going back to the point of you know, many new technologies and innovation coming through, is it easy to adopt this technology? Or do you find any challenges? Uh, and taking it into adopting it into your day-to-day -day activity in the medicine very difficult you understand very difficult why because you imagine you take uh, me uh, being 40 years surgeons and doing something that is working that now i have to introduce something uh, completely new uh, uh, this um, that uh, maybe my generation don't understand very well Okay, uh, I was uh, uh, in last uh, five, six years looking what's happening. I was on this different meeting in United States, and I was lucky that I was sent by my enterprise. And uh, I, a little bit, uh, the guy who is pushing it, you understand? Uh, but uh, uh, that is going to completely. Uh, change uh, our approach for the sports. You understand? For example, I, I'm going to give you an example very easy to understand. Uh, four or five years uh, when we were discussing uh, or when we were reading the, uh, in the newspaper uh, in the Western country about organization of the championship uh, in uh, uh, in Qatar 22, Qatar is a small country and so on, uh, how they are not going to build a big uh, stadium because there is no enough people. But today, you see, uh, the football we play without uh, spectators, you understand? Uh, that means all this uh, new technology, uh, television transmission by 
iPhone and so on, have completely changed our approach to the big events. You understand? And uh, that means, uh, as I was always talking, there is going to be in football, in history of football organization of World Championship, there was uh, organization of World Championship till 22 in Qatar and after uh, 22 in Qatar. That is going to be breaking point in completely different approach uh, to organization of uh, these big sports events. And that is going to really, Qatar and I was working here in the last uh, 15 years. We have worked on the project and uh, step by step uh, and uh, introducing all the innovation, uh, connecting ourselves with everybody outside of Qatar. And we build a really nice uh, knowledge experience uh, that is our treasure, and uh, I'm very positive uh, with uh, the future. Uh, yes. Yeah, and I think the one institute that is helping here locally in the ecosystem is, of course, Jasur. Afra, can you tell us what are the role that Jasur is playing and how are they preparing for sports and sports tech ecosystem within the 2030 national vision? So, as you know, Jusur Institute is the education and training arm of the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy. And we address the different needs that we have, uh, whether uh, domestically or regionally, uh, in the sports and event industry. So, we have uh, different offerings, uh, whether it's education or training uh, and even research and insight. But as my colleague said, what happened with the pandemic and the complete shift to online uh, platform, I think it's also fast forward the adaptation of using the system. Uh, previously, again, coming from the academic uh, background or uh, sector, uh, there was a hesitation of signing up into an educational program based on online. But now we see people more uh, open to, uh, to undertake such a programs. Uh, the other thing we we saw also more uh, uh, more welcoming from the organization level to uh, to utilize more of the uh, technological uh, offerings and setups to share the knowledge. So it's not uh, no longer a physical or offline uh, training that is used to upskill human capital uh, in Qatar. And of course, whatever training that we're creating now is only the beginning for a longer uh, journey to further develop both in uh, Qatar and regionally. With COVID, did you see that your, uh, your platform was at any time uh, disturbed and then had to restart? Did you stop? Uh, progressing within Jasur, and can you take us through that journey of what you experienced in the past few months? Uh, so, uh, before the pandemic, as I said, we used to have both methods in delivering our programs, the offline and online. And uh, uh, I, I remember the first uh, case of coronavirus, one of our strategic uh, partner, uh, highlight the risk of uh, having this uh, going bigger than China and, uh, and Qatar and our partners internationally that we need to react fast in adapting uh, uh, to the shift. And here I want to acknowledge uh, my team and also uh, our academic partner uh, Bakuni University for overseeing the risk and also for the delegates for being open and committing to continue their uh, education journey. So as a team, we have to shift our uh, all our offerings. Again, we have uh, different uh, different setup of offerings, whether the long uh, the long educational programs or the short workshops um, and network activities, etc. So to to complete the the transformation of all programs, we would requ require some time. But the team put on uh, a lot of works to, to make sure that this happened in a, in a very tight uh, framework. And at the same time, uh, we were doing the training to all our delegates and uh, participants to make sure that they're comfortable in using, uh, using the programs. Uh, and also the, uh, our partners, uh, the local partners, whether Aspetar, Aspire, or QSL and QFA, they were very uh, adaptive to, to the change and uh, they support uh, the delegates or the people coming from the organization to, uh, to uh, take this journey into the online uh, programs.
Yes, the whole world did a shift of education, whether it's homeschooling or institutes that are ourselves, it has been very challenging. Um, Ahmed, can you take us through the challenges that you saw amidst COVID about, I'm sure this was, you know, one of the most challenging times, periods of your career. Um, and how did you overcome this? I think um, COVID, we all agree that that the, the COVID crisis is um, probably the most difficult time that um, that we have ever experienced and, and inshallah hopefully this will be the, the most difficult ever so we will not have to we will not have to uh, experience this again but um, we try to to look at the bright side and, and see what we can uh, learn from from this period and um, we have definitely learned um, how to optimize a lot of operations um, within the organization um, however of course dealing with the coaches um, the players the clubs um, it was 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 very interesting, um, to be honest, because I think we grew um, closer together, being transparent from day one, highlighting um, that their safety was our utmost um, um, priority. Um, however, uh, always keeping in mind our objectives, our foundations, and and um, you know our fundamental um, interest of uh, our common common interest of. Of the clubs, players, and uh, and coaches, and and the league and the federation, you know, to, to maintain um, you know the professional uh, um, level uh, after um, after the crisis. So we always had hope, of course, that um, you know this 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 would take um, um, a period of time, but it would be over at some point. So um, I remember back in, in in March we had a, a very strong meeting with the with the clubs. A uh, very important one where we were very transparent, um, and we told them that we would be able to, or we 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 are going to take any uh, necessary action uh, and decision uh, to maintain their safety, and, um, and and this is what we did when we had to um, when we had to um, uh, freeze uh, all the activities. However, um, during that time where there was no um, no team training and no competition. Um, through technology and innovation, actually, we could uh, monitor the, uh, the the training and the, the the physical condition of the players. First of all, to to make sure that everybody is um, training individually, um, because one day we're going to get back to training and, and, and matches, and we need everybody to be um, at at the highest possible level. And um, uh, and secondly, to plan ahead, to be able to plan um, when we can resume. Uh, training and when we can resume playing um, competitive matches um, through the data that we uh, collected um, with the, with the GF GPS uh, system, um, uh, which the players use every day um, in, in, in their training. And if we compare, and I think Dr. Popovich can can confirm uh, confirm this, um, we were one of the first leagues to to start um, to start uh, to to, re to resume training and um, and competitive matches. Um, but we studied before taking the decision um, how long um, we would need to to, uh, to keep the, the, the teams training before we start our league and, and in, in what frequency we could play our league matches in order to avoid um, any injuries. And if you see um, in, in, in many major leagues in, in Europe, there was a phenomenon uh, this year uh, of uh, an increase in uh, especially hamstring injuries. Um, However, in, in, in our case, we did not have this case because we, we have we've prevented this by giving enough time to the to the to the teams and to the players to prepare um, because we could see in the in the you know through the data um, how how prepared they are and what what exactly they need um, to be able to compete again at the highest level. Um, so, if there is one thing that we we have learned um, in this in this uh, in these difficult times. Um, it's uh, it's to be to be adaptive, um, and I would like to take the opportunity um, today to, to to thank all the people on the front line who who made it possible for us to to survive and, and, and to be there. Uh, and some of them survived, and some of them didn't. You know, um, it was a difficult time for for, for the whole world. Um, you know, a lot of people suffered um, mentally. Some, some a lot of people suffered. Uh, physically, many people died, um, but the people on the on the front line showed us um, what what the priorities are for the world, and it's not always football. 
And and this was an important uh, lesson for our players, which we communicated to them. It's um, you know, football is so important, and uh, you know you are followed by millions of people, and you have good salaries. But you know, when it comes to life, um, doctors, uh, nurses, the people on the front line, those are our, our real heroes, our our real stars. And and I think um, this this has created a shift in the mentality. I think across the world. Um, when it comes to football players themselves, and I, I really hope that they learned this lesson. But also, um, you know, football um, and sports uh, fanatics, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, it's not a matter of uh, life and death. It's just football. Um, when it comes to life and death, this crisis has shown us who the real stars are and who, who the real heroes are. That's very absolutely true, uh, Ahmed. For the, uh, I appreciate those words, and we definitely did see a lot of soldiers coming through the health industry and stepping up in the front lines. Um, Dr. Popovich, what can you tell us about what role Aspetar played to ensure that QSL is one of the first clubs in the world to get back up and started again? <laughs> Doctor, there was uh, this nurse is always in the front line. Um, uh, I agree uh, uh, with you. And uh, what is the most important? Uh, most important uh, to have a transparency. You understand? And uh, if you have transparency, if you have uh, uh, honest information for the uh, population and uh, clear guidelines, everything uh, is going to function. For that uh, reason, this uh, pandemic uh, was not was easy in uh, Qatar, comparing what, with uh, lots of other countries in the world, uh, function very nicely, very smooth. And uh, that's uh, really in medicine uh, example how you should uh, how a, a country should manage this um, uh, and uh, any pandemic uh, concerning uh, uh, football of course uh, we was ask we was uh, discussing we was asking ourselves the, uh, the question uh, what is going to happen when uh, the players is going to take uh, once again the training there is there was going to be uh, lots of enthusiasm to come back and the uh, results uh, are injury uh, as ahmed mentioned in football play that's a hamstring injury and after he's go is going to be lost for six uh, weeks or three months and uh, uh, we, in collaboration by our N uh, uh, NSAP program uh, and all our uh, staff in the clubs working with them, we have developed this progressive uh, approach uh, to coming back because, uh, you know, uh, a few weeks uh, later with the presence, it doesn't matter, you understand, because uh, if injury starts after, they are going to be out. Uh, six months, three months, and after, uh, and we, we we are pretty proud how we manage it and how we introduce uh, uh, these football competitions in Qatar. And now is this new tournament uh, who is organized, uh, who starts, uh, and uh, we are very enthusiastic, uh, com uh, like everybody, to go forward. Yes, enthusiastic is the right word. And the most thing people are enthusiastic about is, of course, the World Cup here being in Qatar. Um, Afra, can you take us through it? We have a lot. We have many, many people within the sports tech scene that are wanting to come and be involved in the World Cup in any way possible. What advice would you give them? And what would you tell to these startups that are looking to enter the Qatari market? What is the best approach um, for them to be uh, able to get involved? Um, first of all, to uh, uh, to understand the market needs, 
as uh, my colleague mentioned, uh, we're about to to host uh, the first World Cup, and the World Cup is a large uh, scale event. Uh, and we have uh, different uh, aspects or requirements to support delivering uh, delivering the event. So I encourage all talents or all entrepreneurs to first study what what is required, and from that build uh, build their offerings or services around that. And uh, second of all, to be uh, competitive uh, competitive to the, to the other service providers in the market. Um, and, and to be able to do that, I think uh, the key foundation is to have the right education and knowledge of the market and of the industry of sports. From your experience, is there somewhere specific where people can come and be able to find this information within the Qatari uh, market? Is there any kind of uh, you know institute or platform where people can be able to achieve this information that they're looking for? So Jusur Institute did uh, a tracker research, uh, uh, basically to understand where are we at uh, in the sports and event industry in Qatar and the MENA region. In this research, we highlight uh, the area of improvement, I would say. Uh, and I think this, uh, this insight or this research can, can be uh, the right uh, go-to document to understand uh, to understand the industries and then understand the areas uh, that uh, we need further to further develop uh, locally in Qatar. Ahmed, I would like to ask you the same question. Uh, there's many people that are hoping to get into uh, Qatar as a whole and of course Qatar Stars League. So what advice do you give them uh, and when they approach you with new technology uh, that they won't want to see? Um. I fully agree with my colleague Ms. Um, Afla. Um, knowing knowing the market, the context um, of the country, the background um, is is, um, is fundamental. Um, another advice that I have um, is you need to have the right purpose of your innovation. So we we receive a lot of um, a lot of um, you know proposals or innovations um, where the purpose is um, let's say weak. Um, so if for example, in, in, in football innovation and football analysis, if if your innovation is only there to give me numbers and I can't make use um, of the numbers to win the game, then you, you're, you're starting off uh, wrong. If you give me numbers that nobody else can give me and because of these numbers I can I can win a match, then, then you're on track. So the purpose of the innovation I think is, is, uh, is fundamental. Um, and it has to make a comp competitive advantage. It has to bring uh, an added value to, um, to whoever is, is using this technology. Uh, and it has, to be, it has to be something that um, creates a win-win situation for, for, for everyone. So it, again, it's, um, you know, sometimes it's, it, it sounds easier than, um, than it is. Um, the, the purpose has to be um, a, a strong driver of the innovation um, to bring the um, the person using it um, way forward, um, you know, because at the end of the day, we are um, uh, we are in an in, in, in industry uh, which is all about winning. Um, so if you can't make uh, the the club or the team win, um, then you need you need either to change um, your idea um, or you need to change the industry. So the end point with that is how can we win and how can your technology help us win? Is that right, Ahmed? Correct, correct. Of course, um, w within the industry, there are, there are many sectors. So when it comes to security, for example, it's not really about scoring goals, but it's more about detecting maybe um, you know, hooligans. Um, when it comes to the medical sector um, in, in, in football, it's about uh, preventing injuries. Uh, when it comes to uh, spectator services, it's not. It's not. Uh, when, when I say winning, it's um, it's it's about the purpose. It's the concept of of um, you know of, of of creating value rather than um, only scoring goal. It depends really on on um, on the target um, um, of of the innovation uh, itself. But but the concept is you have to make me win. If it's if it's about selling um, selling sandwiches. Uh, for the spectators, if it's um, you know to detect uh, hooligans, prevent injuries, all, all of those are, are wins, are important wins, 
and uh, those can be achieved through innovation and technology, which we have seen in the past um, um, decade um, uh, with 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 a, a very rapid uh, growth, and it will grow uh, um, very rapidly uh, in the in the future. Uh, again, uh, 5G is going to change a lot of things, um, and I believe Dr. Dr. Popovich um, would be very happy to 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 have uh, to have this technology where a, a surgeon in, in you know in the U.S. can um, can under under undertake a, a, a surgery of a player um, um, who is who is in Doha. So this gives, this opens a lot of opportunities um, also for startups. You know to think. Not um, you know you have to you have to start uh, imagining um, how the future is going to be, and not not imagining how um, how you know your your innovation will help me today. But if if it's about um, you know in two years in three years where internet is going to be faster, for example, and I can have um, an, an an analyst who is uh, um, you know a, a, a football coach from uh, let's say um, Spain. Um, who can who can help me as a coach analyze my match um, be, because because of this new future with uh, with the technology and, and innovation then then this is something that is that creates value for um, for all the parties concerned and I think this is a very important um, distinction between um, you know a successful innovation and um, and a not not so successful innovation um, you have you have to start with um, imagining a um, you know a future where your innovation can add can add uh, some kind of of value of of, of winning and, and again when I say winning it's not only about uh, the three points and and, and the goals um, but it's also off the pitch. You bring an important topic on in regards to m medical uh, and being able to operate or you know remote remote healthcare. Now this is really a sensitive topic because at this point you're work you know playing with people's lives and uh, people's health, so you're always hesitant to adopt new technology. And as Dr. Dr. Popovich mentioned, it is also very difficult because the people that in the industry have been doing the same thing for so long that it's very difficult to come in and uh, be able to adopt new tech. So on that note, Dr. Popovich, what is some advice that you can give when people are looking into enter the sports med market? What advice I, uh, I could give? Uh, you know, when you are writing a scientific paper, always they are asking you three or four key words. And uh, uh, what are keywords? Analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, new technique. That is something uh, who is going to be decisive. That means <coughs> the young people who are decide uh, to do the study of medicine, these things uh, have to be part of their uh, uh, formation. Without that, they are going to be lose, uh, lost in the future because the changes are so enormous that is going to be in the near future. Some specialization that we have, uh, uh, that we know, like uh, radiology, for example, in the United States, they don't advise to young people to do this speciality because artificial intelligence is going to replace this speciality to imagine that and that was the till uh, last seven eight years before the, the most demanding speciality uh, lots of other speciality in uh, medicine is going to, to to be non-existent new one is going to be introduced uh, i agree with ahmed that the that is going to be possible to operate it from New York, New York the patient in uh, in Doha or from Doha somebody in uh, New York. Uh, that is possible today. Today, uh, in the IOC, there is also cost effectiveness in medicine that is very important, uh, and. Uh, that's going to be a very exciting time in the next uh, few years. Uh, I hope that uh, 
we in Aspire and in Aspire that, that we are ready to uh, these changes. Uh, these changes is also for uh, changes in enterprise, changes in organization of enterprise uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that can't go only because that's new technology that uh, demands uh, changing complete, completely uh, approach, organization. Today we talk about this uh, uh, flexible, uh, functional type of organization that's uh, very uh, difficult in medicine because that's a structural organization. We have to adapt this organization like April. Uh, they have it, and that's going to be. Uh, the, but the, the but the people have to be ready and to uh, be ready to accept uh, all these changes, who are going to be so quick. You understand? And. Uh, and uh, that's for the good uh, of the uh, human being. And uh, uh, but still, uh, we don't forget that all this system uh, of this new technology, uh, uh, analytics, and uh, pause on the data that we have to put in the system, and. Uh, uh, after we can have the good uh, recommendation, and uh, but uh, that, that's exciting time. And finally, what I would like, uh, because I am involved uh, in past uh, 25 years in sports medicine, uh, I'm repeating for the young people around the world. That's. Uh, be connected with Asper, be connected with Aspetar, that is a leading institution who, thanks to all these uh, different sport events, uh, because don't forget that we are covering 52 international sport events for uh, each year. We have huge experience and uh, uh, with our final goal, it's this World Championship in football that we are ready in this moment, because we passed by lots of sports, uh, big sports events coverage, from World Championship in handball, from uh, World Championship in track and field, and different uh, football events that was organized this uh, year. Uh, check, recheck, uh, change to do it better. And uh, that is the place to be for young people. That is the place for these people who, young people who have new ideas, uh, be connected, come to show us. Uh, the, today you don't need to travel. You can utilize all this platform to be connected. And uh, I'm really excited what is going to stay after we here, you understand, because yes. new generation is taking over. Yes. Being connected and being ready, I think with the whole pandemic, we are all now ready to adopt new technology, no matter what industry you're in. And uh, it's maybe may becoming easy and it's just proven that technology is going to be implemented in your daily uh, life, whether you're ready or not. So you either keep up or you're going to be behind. Um, I do want to open the floor. We do have a question for Ahmed. Um, Ahmed, you mentioned, uh, it says, Mr. Ahmed, you have mentioned data analysis and sports science. I would like to know how your organiza organization is using data analysis techniques in managing QSL. OK, so first of all, um of course, our target is to be, to become a better league. So um, we have um, we have an agreement with uh, with Stats, um, which gives um, all the clubs, but also um, to the league, all the statistics of of every single official match um, that we host. Um, this gives us the opportunity of um, of comparing, of course, between um, you know the, the the different the different data of different players of of different. Uh, matches giving the, the opportunity to the players 
to learn from um, the, um, their performance, to understand what their performance is, but especially also giving the um, giving the um, the coaching staff um, um, the necessary data to develop uh, the players. Because of course, to to have a better league, we need better players, and better players, we need coaches who develop those players. So with this data, they can um, they can they can work on they can work on their players, um, and and this became more and more important because. The coaches are, are more and more uh, relying on, um, on 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 any data um, to to analyze not only the opponent but also their own their own um, team. Um, the analysis of the opponent is, is of course very very important. Um, you have now um, even um, some people around the world um, in in um, you know being part of a um, coaching staff who are specifically. Um, um, hired just to analyze the, the opponent and, and and to analyze how um, his team can um, can um, take an advantage of um, the weaknesses of the of the opponent. Um, so so uh, th- this is this is um, a very important um, component of of uh, uh, development uh, when it comes to uh, achieving our um, technical objectives. It sounds like when we first started to do our data analysis, we focused on at home and what our current team and athletes are doing. But very good point. Now that we've have this under control, we are looking out to our opponents and bringing that uh, comparison with what is happening here. Um, this concludes uh, our uh, evening. Uh, Thank you, Ahmed. Sorry, go ahead. Did you want to come say something? Yes, we we, we also we also provide the, the um, all the teams with uh, GPS vests to track um, the performance during the during the training live so during the training live they they uh, they analyze um, the performance the physical performance of of their players um, first of all to prevent injuries but also to see uh, how much they're pushing themselves and uh, how they can push themselves uh, even more in accordance to, uh, to uh, the specific training session that um, has been planned by the by the coaching staff this is also a, a huge a step um, um, through uh, innovation and technology, which which uh, hopefully will, will make us uh, develop our our players uh, faster, um, um, you know, as, as to the to the to the world stage. Yes. So now you have the ability to look into the physical, and the next one is mental and emotional intelligence, right? So technology that can even help you tell how they're feeling or uh, emotionally, and if they're ready to be on the pitch on that day. So we have a lot of great things looking forward uh, in the near future within sports tech. I want to thank you all for being with us today, Afra, Dr. Popovic, and Ahmed. We appreciate your time and really, really uh, great looking into the insights within your industry as well as uh, your entities. Thank you for that. To our audience, I hope you have enjoyed this discussion and we invite you all to participate to take advantage of the Rawad Conference and its extensive learning and development opportunity. I would like to thank our partners for their unwavering support that has played a crucial role in Qatar Sports Tech's leading position today across the region and in development of the national sports tech industry. Thank you all for joining us and good night.